Hello everyone, it's April week three and of course time for the Let's Get Arty stroked mixed media prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. And for anybody who wants to follow along with our prompts, uh, prompts and challenges, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group in the description box below. Now, I wanted something really quick and easy to do this week because by the time this video goes live, I will be in Budapest. Of course, it was Easter last weekend and we were away seeing family. Um, we've had Toby as well although he's now gone home to his dad so you know I've just had no time on my hands but you know was just desperate to try and do something now Alex was on holiday hence we were looking after Toby and he brought these beautiful cards for me back from Thailand I think they're absolutely gorgeous and this has prompted this week's um, video um, I'm going to do um, a mixed media project with fabric and um, handmade paper and all of that kind of thing I've had this this fabric um, sitting by the side of my desk for a couple of years. Um, it's from one of the um, sets that I had, the Sari fabric sets that I had from um, Love Me Blue. I'll leave the link to her shop in the description box below because she has some amazing um, packs of beautiful Sari and ethnic style fabrics. So I've pulled out a few other bits that I thought I might be able to team with it. And the inspiration um, was definitely from these cards. I want to make um, a tiny journal. No idea what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to make one anyway. Now I've got this piece of handmade paper and this was sent to me by my friend Pam. And what I'm thinking is that I'm going to make myself a little tiny um, journal and I'm going to use this for the spine. I think that's going to look absolutely beautiful. Um, and then, of course, I can use this to decorate it with. I've got this button that I've made at some stage. I've um, probably used um, antiquing wax, um, treasure gold, something like that. And I'm wondering whether I can use this as um, a button. But to start off with, what I want to do is line this piece of paper. And I've got this a beautiful hessian fabric here. Um, I know that um, a lot of you have asked, um, recently where I get my hessian fabrics from. I get them from Amazon and if I remember I will leave the link to the shop where I get them from but I'm going to um, put some of this on the inside I think just to give it um, a bit more strength. I think the colour will match and go really well with the other bits and pieces I want to use. I'm going to take it um, off to the ironing board. I want to get rid of this crease. I'm also just going to use a glue stick um, just to temporarily um, hold the fabric down and then I'm just going to sew all around the edge. So as soon as I've done that I'll be straight back. So you can see I've sewn my paper and my fabric together. Um, just used a basic um, running stitch. I did actually leave myself a border and all I'm going to do now is take my fabric scissors and just cut this flush um, around the edges and um, then my hessian will eventually just fray. So I'm just going to tidy this up and then I'm just pulling off the um, loose loose edges so it will give it um, a really nice frayed look which um, which I like. Here we are, just go all the way around. Of course it'll stop at my stitching so there we go that, um, that looks um, that looks fine so that's the inside of my little um, journal notebook whatever it um, turns out to be and that's the outside cover so far so of course I want to use um, this beautiful fabric here oh gosh all the bits um, are sticking to my sweater and let's see how do I want to um, do this I'm going to have to fold this, um, I think, just um, just roughly and then make sure I get it the right way around. I think I want this on the front and I'm just going to take this off to the sewing machine um, again and just stitch down that side and the back as well just to attach it um, I will um, apply some um, glue to the back of the back of this which part do I want to be the top and which do I want to be the the bottom I don't think it um, it really matters so I'm just going to apply some Pritt stick loosely over over this just to roughly hold it um, in place. I'm wondering whether I should um, use some Fabri-Tac. Do you know, I think I, I think I will. 
Here we go. Let's um, let's go for it. I'm not going to go right to the edges though because I don't want the fabric tag to clog up my um, sewing machine. So I'm just going to add a bit of this, not too much because I don't want it to seep through the other side of my beautiful fabric. I just want um, enough to hold it in place. And then I'm just going to smooth the glue out with my with my finger. And let's see if I can um, line line this up. I want um, roughly the same amount of fabric showing on the front as I do on the back. And there we go. That's a that's about right. So I'm just going to wrap this um, over, hold it down for a second or two. And then I'm just going to take it off to the sewing machine now and I'm just going to stitch here and stitch here as well. Let's just um, straighten, straighten that out. There we go, that should be fine. This is what I've got so far. Now, I have to tell you that this fabric was not very easy to sew at all. It was kind of stretchy and kept pulling all over the place. I've used a zigzag stitch to go all the way um, around on all four edges. And I know that that um, unevenness is going to really bother me. So what I'm going to do is just add some of this some um, lovely pink velvet ribbon. I think colour-wise this is going to go. Let me just bring in the focal image. Which way around does that go? You see that's going to go really nicely. And I'm just going to glue this down just with some, um, I think I'm going to use my art glitter glue because I just find that it doesn't seep um, as much as, um, as Fabri-Tac does. So I'm just going to cut it to more or less the right size. Add some glue to the back of um, this. Let's see if I can get my glue to uh, to come out. Oh, here we go. And I'm just going to add a really thin, thin layer all the way along. Just trying to get it as close to the edges as I as I can. So let's stick this first piece of ribbon on. Then I'll do the same um, with the back. And then I'm just going to weight it down underneath a heavy book. And I just think that it's less likely that this is going to show once the glue has dried than if I'd used um, Fabri-Tac. So let's cut another piece. And I'm going to do the same again. In fact, what I'm going to do with this one is just smooth the glue out a little bit as well. I should have done that with the other side, but I didn't think about it. But um, here we go. So this one will probably um, end up being the front. Oh, I've got glue where I don't want it. I'm just going to have to wipe that off quickly. And that should disguise my messy areas. Let me just um, try and wipe this off without um, trying to flatten down the beautiful texture of, um, of my paper. So I'm just going to weight this down underneath um, a heavy book. Now that looks better to me and I think by the time the glue has dried um, and it's gone clear on the other side it will look much um, much neater. Now I've been trying to figure out how on earth I am going to um, glue my embellishment on because it's not particularly flat so I think what I'm going to do is use some of this bond web fusible webbing and I'm just going to stick stick it down just to strengthen it and give it a bit more stability because I'd like to run this through the sewing machine. So I'm just going to take this off to the um, ironing board. Let me just um, cut, cut a piece of this. Of course, that's the glue side. So I'm just going to um, glue, glue that down. And in fact, actually, I might then. Um, in fact, that wouldn't work, would it? I wish I had double-sided uh, bonder web, but there we go. I don't. I'll figure that out once I've um, glued this on. That's made it a lot um, stronger. I'm really happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is just cut, cut this out and try and um, straighten the shape up a bit and tidy, tidy it up. And I think I'm just going to glue this straight down. I'm not going to add um, any stitching. For one, um, the gold is too close to the edge, so I don't want to spoil it. Um, you see, what I can do is just try 
and make this as even as I can. So I'm just going to fiddle um, around with this until I'm I'm happy with it. I think that will be OK. And I'm just going to glue that on. And of course, because I've got this um, fusing, this webbing now on the other side, um, I'll be able to glue it um, without the risk of the glue seeping through. And of course, you know, it's lost its stretch as well, which is um, just just perfect. I've tidied that up and I'm really happy with it. And what I'm going to do is add some of my treasure gold just around the edges, just um, a small amount. In fact, let me just bring in this um, chopping mat here. Because this is so stable now, I think I can add a tiny amount of gold. If I used a gold pen, I think it would um, bleed and feather. But this will just hopefully um, frame it and just give it a little something because the embroidery is just too close to the edge for me to get away with stitching it. Some of you um, really brilliant seamstresses out there would probably brave it, but um, I don't trust myself. So treasure gold um, it is. And that looks really pretty, actually. That was definitely a, a good move. It's just all the little details, isn't it, that... Um, you know, turn something plain into something special. And I'm just going to use a little bit of my Kalal glue, Fabri-Tac 3-in-1, it's all the same kind of stuff, just around the edges. And I'm just going to glue this straight down. Come out, you. I haven't used this for quite a while. So, of course, it's all sunk to the bottom. And then I can just smooth this out with my with my finger just to make sure that the glue goes all the way to the edges and how do we want this to go? I think I want to line it up with the outside edge of the um, ribbon. Try and get it as even as I as I can and just carefully. Oh, you see, now I've smudged the, um, the gold, but it's okay, all is good. It's just blown straight, straight off, but I'm just going to weight this down um, underneath a heavy book. Now I was going to use this um, and add maybe a button or something as an embellishment. But whilst I was having a look um, through my button stash, I found this. Um, this has come off a reed diffuser or a candle or something, but shape-wise, um, it's perfect. And I just think that will add the perfect finishing touch. So let's just um, snip this off and then I'm just going to use my wire cutters um, just to take the top off here as well. What have I done with them? I did pull them um, out and I'm going to go off camera to do this. Hopefully I won't completely wreck my, um, my embellishment but I've got glasses on as well by the way just so that it doesn't um, ping. Yep you see that's cut through really really nicely. Oh, perfect. There we go. And I'm just going to take um, a file and just file away these um, sharp, sharp edges. I don't know whether you can see them. I'm going to use some E6000. Um, this is E6000 plus. Oh, hang on. We've got some uh, globby bits. Let me just uh, grab a tissue. Let's just wipe, wipe these off. You can see I haven't used this for quite, quite some time. Let's poke into it and I'm just going to apply it just to the very centre and then just use a toothpick just to smooth it um, smooth it out because I don't want it sort of bleeding all over the place. I don't think I'm going to need too much glue, maybe a little bit more than more than that. There we go, perhaps we'll leave that bit in the centre. And I'm just going to stick this, stick this on. That is just perfect. It's so pretty. I love that. So I'm just going to leave this um, to dry. Well, I am really happy with that, but I'm going to leave it here for today because it's going to take um, a few hours um, overnight, certainly, for this little embellishment to dry. So I can't really do anything else to my journal until I know that that's firmly glued on. And, of course, I need to go and pack. We are flying out from Heathrow tomorrow morning, but we're heading um, down to stay in a hotel tonight um, just because of, we need to be at Heathrow for 8 o'clock um, in the morning. So we've decided to make a night of it and we 
we've got a hotel book tonight so I need to go and pack I need to go and paint um, my nails as well but as soon as I get back from Budapest I'll be back to finish this off we of course need to add um, a signature I might even add um, a charm dangle to the side of this as well but isn't that just so pretty can't believe my luck that I found um, this beautiful embellishment that is just so perfect sometimes things are just meant to be aren't they and who knows I might find some papers to use for my signatures whilst I'm in Budapest I might find something interesting for any of my crafty friends who've been to Budapest um, if you've got any ideas that you can share of things I should look out for craft wise whilst I'm there you know do let me know in the comments below because um, we're there until Monday um, I'm so excited I just can't wait and I hope this has given you some ideas as to how to interpret the prompts I mean the prompts we try to keep as broad as possible and you know this really shows that you can interpret them um, in any way um, as I've said at the beginning of the video for anybody who's interested in following along with our prompts and challenges I'll leave the link to the Facebook group in the description box below but if you've enjoyed my video today as always I'd very much appreciate a thumbs up do let me know what you think in the comments below but most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now